Hello, my name is Ryan Peterson, and this week I did my video on um, the eruption of Mount St. Helens. Um, so firstly, when did this eruption start? Um, that would be March 16th, 1980. Sorry, you know, yeah, March 16th, 1980 is when a few small earthquakes started to occur. Um, and then by March 27th, 1980, uh, there, is, there was hundreds of additional earthquakes and um, it actually erupted for the first time in 100 years. And this eruption was a steam explosion that blasted a 200 to 250 foot wide crater through the summit. Um, and then this continued to um, crack and erupt and or the earthquakes earthquakes continued until a week later it was um, up to 1300 feet wide um, and then it started erupting every hour um, and then it started erupting every day and then by may 17th there had been 10,000 earthquakes um, the bulge uh, was growing out of the volcano um, at about 6.5 feet per day so there was this bulge on the side um, and then by May 18th at May 18th 1980 at 8 32 a.m. there was a earthquake that was a magnitude of 1.5 this earthquake triggered a chain reaction um, and then this chain reaction was that the bulge and the summit slid away and this was the largest debris avalanche in earth's recorded history with 3.3 billion cubic yards um, sliding down the mountain which is equivalent to about 1 million uh, olympic sized pools sliding down the mountain um, after this landslide happened part of the Kryp cryptodome <laughs> had been exposed and that was very hot from the magma inside and it was also very pressurized from the magma inside. And this then led to immediate depressurization, uh, which then occur, which then made a lateral explosion occur. Um, this then removed nearly a thousand feet of the cone and uh, the this lateral blast was going the same direction as the landslide. So this accelerated the landslide up to 300 miles per hour. And this also then um, triggered an eruption cloud, um, which was a blast of tephra. And that began to rise after a few minutes. And after 15 minutes, uh, this tephra had reached feet of, reached heights of up to 80,000 feet. Uh, this lateral blast devastated 19 miles from west to east and about 12 and a half miles north. Um, and it was located in a heavily forested area. And after this explosion, there was no trees left within six miles of the volcano. Um, and then one hour after this happened, the Pelian eruption occurred, which um, this new opening from the, lat from the lateral explosion exposed the conduit, which is um, like the volcano's magma storage chamber. And this allowed it, the magma, to expand up and out, which also released um, a large tephra flume with it. Uh, this eruption then lasted nine hours. And uh, by noon, the pyroclastic flow uh, was going about 50 to 80 miles per hour and it had gone as far as five miles north. And then by the end of this, 520 million tons of ash were released across, and then all this ash traveled across the US within a, a span of three days. And then it traveled across the world in a span of 15 days. Um, and then what is the impact of this? There was 57 deaths um, and $1.1 billion in property damage, which would be $3.5 billion today. Um, 
what we could we do to mitigate this in the future? Um, I would say the easiest response would be not to le uh, live near volcano because that would just get rid of the problem entirely. But if you do decide you need to live by the volcano, um, I would say then making sure you evacuate uh, when it starts earth like producing earthquakes consistently or bulging at all because those are sure signs that it's going to erupt soon. Um, so that is the tragedy of the Mount St. Helens explosion in 1980. Thank you for watching.